What's up Maniacs, my name is Mex, I am a wrestling fan, a wrestling enthusiast, a WrestleManiac if you will and today we are going to talk about AEW Night 1 of Fighter Fest. They are basically putting a pay-per-view level show on TV for our viewing pleasure so we are going to indulge in it and we are going to enjoy it. Right here on WrestleManiac UK I review everything that is WWE and AEW so if this sounds like the place for you make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you are notified every time I drop a new video. Now I know I said indulge and enjoy but if I'm completely honest I was a bit underwhelmed by this show, night one of this show. Well if I'm honest I don't know what I expected but I just felt like it was just a bit slower paced than usual. Like I've seen dynamites in recent week being a bit more interesting than this week's fighter fest but there were some really good parts that we're going to jump into right now so we got cody versus jake hager for the tnt championship and if i'm completely honest i didn't think jake hager was going to win here and just as a spoiler if you haven't watched it he didn't win Cody won but the finish is the key part here now Jake Hager had Cody in some type of headlock on the ground I guess his shoulders were on the ground and Cody who was on top of Hager basically pinned him Hager got up thinking he had won and it wasn't the case Cody had actually won like I said I expected Cody to win so this was all fine for me and after the match Jake Hager took his frustrations out on the referee knocking the referee out cold so I'm suspecting he's going to receive some type of fine I don't know AEW's protocol in WWE that is definitely fine worthy or we get told they get fined so I don't know the protocol in AEW but I would expect some type of punishment coming Jake Hager's way the question is now Cody has had a couple solid title defense of the TNT Championship. Who is he going to lose to? Who is going to dethrone Cody as the TNT Champion? During the show we had Lance Archer and Joey Janela going at it outside the ring and I was thinking to myself man did they make the right choice putting this belt on Cody? Because Lance Archer has gone a bit cold after the TNT Championship final don't you think? I don't feel like we have seen him much. He's had matches here and there mainly on Dark. He's now in this little feud with Joey Janela but I really think just to build up another kind of main event looking guy that they could have done with putting that belt on Lance Archer and maybe Cody could have come round to beating him for it eventually. Another match that I thought was really good was MGF and Wardlow versus Jurassic Express. It was Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. I think these guys together all just have terrific chemistry like Luchasaurus is underrated I'm sorry and MJF and Jungle Boy they showed us at the last pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, how good they are. And again, we saw this this past week. Like, these are two super young guys. I don't think any of them is over about 25 years old. I think they're both about maybe 23 or so, 24 at max. So good, so young and so good. So much to offer this business once they get older, get a bit more experience. I'm really looking forward to what the future has to hold for Jungle Boy and MJF. We also had Chris Jericho on commentary for the majority of the show. He was so entertaining as ever. And next week, he will be taking on Orange Cassidy in the match I'm really looking forward to out of the two nights of Fighter Fest. John Moxley and Brian Cage's world title match, which was supposed to be next week on night two, has now been postponed to the week after at Fight for the Fallen. John Moxley's wife Renee Young is very unwell at the moment and he doesn't deem it safe for him to travel. He doesn't want to endanger his colleagues at work and Taz referred to this in his promo during the show which I think was really smartly done especially because we all know as we've been told Moxley has been tested several times and all tests have returned negative. So there's actually nothing wrong with him and Taz has spun it and made it seem like now Moxley you have no excuse and you're just running from Brian Cage. Again they took a jab at WWE saying that they run a tight ship and this could never happen to them because everyone gets tested at the shows as well. WWE have recently had a lot of their employees come down with the illness but AEW are doing things right says Taz. So yeah fight for the fallen in two weeks time we will get the world title match John Moxley versus Brian Cage. Guys, if you're enjoying my review so far, please give me a thumbs up, hit the like button. It goes a long way and I appreciate it. 
Other matches on the card included the Women's Championship, Cheetah versus Penelope Ford. And I think we all knew that Penelope Ford wasn't going to win, but she put up a good fight. Kip Sabian, as most of us would have assumed, got heavily involved in this match, but was batted away on all of his attempts by Cheetah, and Cheetah retains the Women's Championship here. Private Party defeated Santana and Ortiz in their tag match, and it has made Private Party the new number one contenders for whoever won the Tag Team Championships on this particular night. So let's get into the Tag Team Championship match. So we had Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page versus the best friends Chuck Taylor and Trent Barretta. Best friends were brought to the arena by Trent's mum. She gave him a kiss on the cheek and told him to have fun before he got into the ring and he's all there mean mugging acting like a tough guy and your mum's kissing you on your cheek <laughs> like it was really jokes. Now I don't want to be a Debbie Downer but for me this match just didn't do it. I expected so much and if I'm honest there was a little part of me that thought are best friends gonna win here? If you remember back to last week, they showed a vignette of best friends have been tagging for so long and have never won a tag team championships anywhere together. And I thought, is this gonna be it? Are they gonna start moving away from Omega and Adam Page as a partnership? I thought that this could be a good time to, to start putting the wheels in motion for that. And to be fair, they've been building up best friends for quite a while. They've won their last seven tag team matches. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be Adam Page got the pin on Trent and Omega and Adam Page retained the tag team championships. FTR were at ringside as well, came down to share some beers after the match. As you know, Kenny Omega doesn't drink, so the beer that they gave Kenny Omega ended up on the floor outside the ring. And Dax Harwood from FTR didn't really take too well to that. They were about to get into it, it looks like, before the Young Bucks came and saved the day. So yeah, Omega and Adam Page, still tag team champions, private party, the new number one contenders. And like I said, I kind of did think we were going to get something special from that tag match in the main event, but it didn't really deliver for me personally. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of that match. I hope you tune in next week with me for night two. Hopefully it's going to be better than this week's night one. And if you enjoyed this review, please hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to WrestleManiac UK. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video. And that's me, WrestleManiac UK, signing out. And I'll see you soon.